today I'm cycling to Hungerford Town. Well, technically I'm filming this the day before, but in this video, I'll be cycling to Hungerford Town. It's about 81 miles from my home in Crawley and promises to be a real gruelling challenge. Now, as anybody who follows me on Twitter knows, Hungerford Town are one of my favourite teams. I try not to have favourites in this division, but I've got a bit of a soft spot for small but mighty Hungerford Town. This will actually be my first time going to see them at their home stadium, uh, the Ball Pit Lane. The Ball Pit Lane was built in 1896, something like that. It was built in the last couple of centuries ago, and uh, it's a real throwback. It's, it holds about 3,000 people, and it harks back to a bygone era. You know, small boys in a park, jump us a goalpost, isn't it? Marvellous. They're a real family community club and uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, visiting them today. So let's get on with the cycle. I'm having to start at five o'clock in the morning. Um, so let's begin the cycle. So I'm in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I've got a broken bike, the cartridge that holds the chain on the back wheel. Um, the same one that broke on the way to Concord Ranges is completely broken. Um, I don't know what's happened, but it looks pretty unfixable to me. So um, uh, it's a bit of a disaster, but I do have a second bike. More importantly, I've got an amazing wife. She's currently on her way, despite the fact it's six something in the morning. Uh, she's currently on her way with my other bike to drop that off to me and take uh, this thing uh, and preferably uh, take it to the tip on, the, on her way home. So not the best start and I'm pretty disappointed given that I was making pretty good time but at least I've got an alternative backup plan and uh, I better get on with the ride. later well i'm currently outside aldershot station i've just got the train from guildford as i was riding for guildford um i realized just how late i was going to be so uh, i jumped on a train from guildford to aldershot uh, which took about 17 minutes uh, and i'm going to continue my journey from here uh, it's still quite a significant ride uh, i've still got another sort of three and a half four hours to go so off we go <laughs>
Well, I made it, 82 miles, despite uh, one broken chain, uh, one flat tire, one puncture, two bikes, and one terminally ill cassette. So that's one bike eliminated to the scrap heap. So I'm excited today, it's the FA Cup rather than the National League South and Hungerford Town are playing Bromley. Bromley flying high in the National League. They've won five out of five, so they're going to be formidable opposition. Of course, they're the favourites today. But you rule Hungerford Town out at your peril. Hungerford Town have a, a, a great knack of uh, digging in and getting results when it counts. And they've played well this season, much better than their uh, uh, position in the table suggests. Patrick Chambers, chairman of Hungover Town and a proud man right now. Excellent, yeah. How did you find the game where you just uh, narrowly lost 2-1 to Bromley? I, I don't think we could have done a lot more. You know, I, I woke up this morning and I thought I'm just going to enjoy the day, relax. You know, we're playing Bromley, an amazing team, and we gave a real good account of ourselves. You know, we, we get a goal in front from a, a sloppy penalty that they gave, but it was a stonewaller. Seems he's always going to put that away. And then just, you know, a couple of minutes for our time, such an uncharacteristic error at the back where, you know, he's one of the best goalkeepers, if not the best goalkeeper in our division. And he kept us in it, second half. Two great saves, Two right? amazing saves, you know, so he, he can still hold his head up. Just a great game, and I, I thought, entertaining, crowd of 722, which is massive. That's brilliant. You know, for us. So I, I've, I've really enjoyed it. So how long have you been involved with Hungerford Town then? Two years ago, last March, my first season was the COVID season, and then of course this season is, you know, is what it is. So. Yeah. Uh, you obviously mentioned that you're the chairman. Um, when I cycled to the ground, one of the first things I noticed was uh, that you were on the turnstile selling tickets, 
talking to the fans. Um, and that's really unusual. Tell me what other roles you have and why is it that you put yourself on the turnstile before the game? Uh, so I, I go on the side where it's prepaid. So we launched online ticketing for, for this season and our four for a score deal, you know, which is really popular. And I think it's just nice to welcome the fans. You know, our fans see me there on the gate and I, I know a lot of them by name. It, it, it's just what we do. We're trying to build this club, great community. We have the juniors here at every game. Uh, you got served by my wife, you know, in the snack shack. Um, this little club gets under your skin and you, you want to do the best for it. It's you know, a special club for sure, isn't it? it? It is a special club and there's a special squad of players there that, that are here for the right reasons. You know, we, we haven't got a lot of money. You know, we, we've got probably the smallest budget in the National League South. But that's why we have that hashtag small but mighty. <laughs> Word on Danny Robinson, what a, what a signing he's been uh, in, in the managerial hot seat. Yeah, I think he's the best young manager out there. You know, obviously I'm very biased. You know, he's 35. He's been a manager since he was 22. He was at step four, you know, when he, when he joined us, but he'd won the Vars when he was a step five club, won promotion. He, he's a winner, uh, but he gets us. He gets the club, you know, he lives 30 minutes from here. Same as me, I, you know, I live 15 minutes from here. He gets it. We've got the best local players. I thought the right back today, Reese Tyler, was outstanding. Lives mm. 10 minutes from the ground. Callum Wilmoth, the number eight, again, you know, he was probably on the building site this morning at eight o'clock, but <laughs> finished early. We've got the right culture, but we've still got a bit of quality. And we've got the right mix. Great team spirit, work hard, and a, and a gaffer who wants to win. Well, uh, Danny Robinson's definitely done better than I ever have managing Hungerford Town on, on Football Manager. So best of luck to him and best of luck to you for this season. Thank you. So final question. You had an amazing season last season. Desperately unlucky with the way that the league ended, given your form and, and where you were in the table. What are your uh, aims and hopes and ambitions for this season? So our ambition is the same every season, is to stay in this division, uh, to show other small clubs out there that haven't got lots of money or haven't got a rich benefactor that you can compete at this level. Although I have to say, I think it's probably harder to get here. You know, there's clubs at step three that would be spending way, way more money than us trying to get here. Once you're here, you can pick up some of those young players that want to test themselves at this level and they'll, they'll, they'll come for expenses, you know, or you know, small money. So I, I think it's testament that you don't have to splash the cash, that you can live within your means, which is what we do. Hence, we were able to build, you know, the new stadium, the new stand. We built new changing rooms. Uh, we're a community club and as chairman, I'm the caretaker. And when I hand it on to somebody else, I want to leave it in a better place than when I found it. Congratulations <laughs> to you as well. You know, massive thing that you're doing for prostate cancer. I lost my father with cancer, so it's close to my heart. And I think what you're doing is absolutely massive. And I would ask anybody who's watching this, dig deep, dig deep, because it is a killer and a lot of men ignore it. Really appreciate that. Thank you, Patrick. Thank, Thank you. So we finished 2-1 to Bromley. Both halves followed a fairly similar pattern in that. Uh, Hungerford started off uh, looking a little bit nervous. Bromley were definitely a stronger team uh, to begin with. But as the halves wore on, uh, Hungerford grew into the game more and more. Uh, in the end, I think they're desperately unlucky not to at least force a, a replay uh, over at Bromley. Um, uh, but on the balance of play, probably Bromley did create the better chances. A couple of fantastic Luke Kearney saves uh, keeping Hungerford Town in the game. That being said, uh, uh, apart from the penalty they did win, uh, they definitely should have been awarded another penalty um, uh, later in the second half. So overall, um, look, uh, a really spirited performance from Hungerford Town that can be very, very proud uh, against a really strong Bromley team who um, who are doing great in the uh, Vanarama National League. So 2-1, pity we didn't get to see a, a win for Hungerford Town, but, but a great game and they gave a brilliant account uh, of themselves. So what am I going to look at attribute-wise for some of the hunger for town players well not a lot um, uh, they mostly validated uh, the boosts that we've given them on the basis of their performances over the last 18 months one thing I did note is uh, Keith Emerson's heading is absolutely phenomenal not only does he win the headers that would be the jumping attribute but his headers the actual power and the placement of them uh, is absolutely fantastic so I don't know what his heading attribute is off the top of my head but I'll certainly be having a look at that uh, when I get home
home. Uh, Callum Wilmoth, I know he's got quite high work rate. Um, we definitely saw that in the game today, so I'll definitely be looking at that. Luke Kearney was the vocal communicator I thought he would be at the beginning of the game. Uh, he did have a bit of a howler for the equaliser for Bromley, so I might have a little look at his decision making, um, but it's, it's hard to make a, a change on the basis of one game, so I'm likely uh, to leave it as it is. And the other player that I called out at the beginning of the game was Ryan Seeger. Uh, Ryan Seeger looked classy, uh, he had a great touch. Uh, he was unlucky not to get on the score sheet other than the penalty that he scored, uh, and overall I think he had a really, really good game. Game. He was certainly the danger man for Hunger for Town as far as I could see. So, brilliant game, uh, 82 miles cycling to, to get here, so um, uh, I've really enjoyed it and uh, looking forward to getting the train home. I am definitely not cycling. As always, I'm cycling to raise money for Prostate Cancer UK. Uh, the Just Giving link is on screen now. Please do donate, it's going to a, a really, really great cause.